Bismillah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. We are doing introduction to financial risk management. In this module, we will be studying how to calculate returns and risk, because there are many ways in which returns can be calculated and many ways which risk can be calculated. So we need to know that. You might have learned a bit of these in your basic statistics knowledge, but here we'll be applying in the terms of finance, specifically with respect to portfolios and assets investment. So when we say measure of return, returns can be calculated in many ways. One of the most important way of measuring return is a holding period return. Let me clarify it in the beginning. Returns are normally quoted as per annum. Like if you say I'm depositing money in bank, they'll offer me 8%. So here assume kiya jata hai ke 8% per annum. Hoga. But when we say holding period return, this is not to do with per annum. It could be for one week. It could be for one year. It could be even for more than one year. Ke teen saal ka holding period return kya tha, do saal ka kya tha. So holding period ki exception hoti hai, ye per annum ki bijaye, ye jis period se relate kara hota, uska return hota hai. Ki normal calculation kaise ki ja sakti hai, we take it end period value divided by the beginning period value. Jaise jis period pe humne entry ki and then at what level the investment goes to. It could be positive, it could be negative. Ye in mein zaruri nahi hai ki hamesha investment up bhi jayengi, investment mein kai dafa fall bhi a sakta hai. Deducting with one will give you the return which we are getting. For example, this formula we have placed in the PT is the price at time T divided by P naught is the price at time zero plus any CF. CF means that we are cash flow. When you take a share, you can share it with cash flow. Like in the cash flow bhi mil sakta hai, like in form of dividend. Or if you take a bond, you can be getting some form of interest. So those cash flows are adding in the closing value. And then you deduct a one from it and you'll get the returns out of it. For example, we have a share of 100 rupees. And after the holding period, it turns out to be 105. So 105 divided by 100. And in this period, we get 2 rupees on dividend. So we add that 2 to the 105. So 107 divided by 100 minus 1, this is our return. That is 7%. Now this 7% holding period, if we have days given, then we will know that this is in a month or in a year. So we should appreciate this point that holding period is not linked with year. It could, it, it's linked with the period to which it relates. And we can also calculate holding period returns for a multi-period. Like you have given small periods of return de diye jayin, and then you are required to calculate return for the whole period. For example, what is the three-year holding period return if annual rates are returns are 7%, 9% and a minus, percent, minus 5. As I told, it could be minus as well. So now we have ke different returns of three years. Now we want to see how much over the period return kitna aaya. So what we do is, we calculate karenge, we'll take 1 plus the return for the first period, then times 1 plus the return of the second, and then times and 1 return of the third, minus the 1 formulas 1. So it's 107 plus 1 plus 109 plus 105, here it will be minus. So with this tells us that over the period we have earned a return of 10.8%. This is our total span ka return. Hai. Yani ke 3 year ka holding return 10.8. So there are many ways in which this average could be done. So average return, when we are looking at this example, this was one way of calculating. This is a simple arithmetic mean. Bhi hota hai. We take the values and divide by number. Then it is geometric mean which we just did just we have multiple effects because it is a compounding factor ko capture kar hota hai. another way is money weighted return that's beyond our specific scope because for that you need a proper financial calculator or a spreadsheet to calculate Wo normal calculation se nahi hota, but this method also exists so in average return as i just told you we take the returns of the whole period that could be n number of period divided by n that will give you the average return. This is a simple average that we normally math mein calculate karte hain. So here if we have minus 50, then we have plus 35 and plus 27. These are three period return. So divide that with three and you get the return of 4%. That's the average return. 
whereas when we move to geometric because that has a compounding effect this will take you to different then we have one plus r as we just did in the example we'll take the respective returns and that will be taken care in this case returns fall or come out to be minus five because in the beginning we had a major fall so rather than an average of four we have a negative five percent average return that's geometric return because we are having a compounding effect of what is being done my year of return we are also given situations which we where we are given returns for a short period like holding period returns for a very short period but for comparison we have to analyze it because you can suppose one bank is offering you per annum rate and one bank is offering you a quarterly rate you cannot easily compare so for a comparison purposes we have to bring it to the annualized return mechanism so supposedly we have a weekly return of 0.2 percent so i am asked to compare it with some other measure where we have annual return so what i'll have to do is i have to convert it to annualized rate so here as you can see we what we'll do is we add 1 plus 0 0.02 percent and take the power of 52 because even we know that in a year we are 52 weeks and one week's return is 0.2 percent so when we take the power and deduct the formula one this turn out to be 10.95 percent annualized return so now we can easily compare with some other instrument which is giving a uh, annual rate or a semi-annual rate so we should bring them to all do annualize so here we increased it let's see how we decrease the period we have an 18 months return of 20 percent not a standard period of for comparison then what we do is we take 1.02 that is the rate of the return added with a formula and we take power of 2 by 3 because in 18 months we have one whole year and a six months so we take 2 over 3 that is 0 0.2 0 0.667 and that turns out to be 12.92 percent so here we can easily compare the two instruments with this mechanism another way of looking at return is if how are the returns being presented so there are gross returns and there are net returns this is more applicable in the case of asset management companies or where some fees are expenses are charged so we have a gross return then we deduct that period expenses and then that's the net result what we are getting out of this period and then we have a pre-tax and after tax nominal rate because that is an, another factor because some investments are returns are definitely taxed at different jurisdiction at different rates so we might be earning a high gross rate but when tax is applied that tax factor is taking care and we get after tax return that is the what the investor will actually gain through the investment though they are earning a bit more supposedly they are earning 10 percent minus the tax factor three percent they are actually getting seven percent so here we keep it till here and then we'll add on how these will be practiced more and how they'll be applied in a later phase. Thank you.